Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of All About You. I am Helena and I'm joined by Matilda. Matilda, thank you for coming back. Matilda. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, when I like to discuss about, when I need to discuss about politics and other kind of topics, Matilda is the woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we, if we could call this politics, but I think this has to do a lot. Yeah, yeah, it can go into that side. Yeah. It, it has a lot to do with it. Matilda, what mm-hmm. are we talking about today? Today Hello, we are viewers. talking about the real world versus the virtual world. Okay. And this is something that I think everyone can relate to because nowadays everyone is online. Mm. Everyone is online. So people are watching us now and thinking, why, why, why are we having an episode to talk about internet, about mm-hmm. being online, about you will see how this is damaging families, uh, mental health, and so many other areas of your life. Did you know that this year alone, people are spending a lot of time online? Actually, the average person is spending six hours and 40 minutes a day on the internet. So that means a quarter of the person's day is spent online. Yeah. So what are they doing? Actually, I wouldn't even say in 24 hours, I would mm-hmm. say because some of those hours you are asleep. Yes, true. Hopefully, you are sleeping, <laughs> not mm-hmm. on your device. But we know some people, they, they also uh, jeopardize uh, mm-hmm. that moment. They stay yeah. on the phone f- for long hours at night. It's a long time. Very long. Right? Very long. And, and many things happen as a result. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've spoken about this before on other episodes. Um, you know, regarding children, you know, you are a parent, you, sometimes you are busy, you know, a parent is busy, mm-hmm. maybe working long hours, but as, as long as you know that your child is, is, is you know, uh, there where you know she is or he is, as long as he's, he's busy, well, what is he doing? He's on the phone, he's on his tablet, he's, He's watching something. He's been educated by someone else. Mm -hmm. He's learning things that he shouldn't be learning. Yes. He's watching things that he shouldn't be watching. Um, And and it's a problem. So, Matilda, we have a video we Mm -hmm. can, we would like to share with our viewers. Very short video about one little something that is happening in the world to do with addiction to the internet and being online. Let's have a look. The internet appears harmful enough, but technology dominates the world. Recent research has shown that in the first quarter of 2023, the average time spent on the internet per person is 400 minutes a day. However, minimizing time spent on screens is not that simple. China, one of the world's superpowers, has a record number of addicts to this virtual world. There are about 24 million internet addicts. This problem has brought about intense boot camp style treatments. Some experts question the controversial treatments that involve strenuous physical activity and abuse. Thousands of Chinese teenagers have been labeled internet addicts and are thrown into psychiatric facilities subjected to forced medication military training, and in some cases, even electroshock therapy. According to reports from addicts who were subjected to this, many atrocities are committed there with no stipulation as to when they are cured to leave. So Matilda, yes. What do you think of this? Wow, this is very interesting, and you know, you think it's a movie, right? But it's actually this is real life, real people, real addiction. Because why? Mm. I'm sure when they started watching, you know, going online, doing things on the internet, it started out innocently. Mm -hmm. You know, let me just click on this, let me just go play this game, etc. But it turned into something that has taken over their whole lives, and now Mm -hmm. their parents are having to put them into this kind of, if I can say, boot camp routine to. Many of them, many of them actually read one of the testimonies of one of the people who went there. Mm-hmm. He was actually the one who made, you know, who made a movie, mm-hmm. uh, produced the whole movie to tell his story. Yeah. He went on to graduate mm-hmm. and, uh, and learn about how to make movies and stuff like that. So there's a documentary out there um, about his own story. 
And he said that the majority of the, those young people are taken there without even realizing. Mm -hmm. Their parents will give them like sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. there, there is like a, an agreement with the doctor, give them this, give them that, so they will not know, they will be asleep. When they, when they wake up, they are already in. Mm -hmm. So how can this be a problem? I mean, like we mentioned, we have to be careful. What are our children watching? What are we watching? Because think with me, people who developed, I don't know if you agree with this, mm -hmm. developed those, these social media platforms like Facebook. Um, there's actually another documentary on mm -hmm. them that they have a strategy behind what they've created to grab people's attention so that they can be you know, watching, uh, looking at their screen nonstop and scrolling, scrolling forever. Why? Because then advertisement comes, mm -hmm. you know, money, it generates money and, and more money. And then all these people making videos on other platforms, selling products. And when you realize you are so much, in, you are so deep into what you are involved in, because there's apps for everybody. Yes. When I say apps, I mean platforms. There's, mm -hmm. For people who enjoy movies, people who enjoy music, Sick. people who enjoy Even gaming. Even gaming, talking to other people online, there's an app for everything. Yeah, but everything is done in a mm. way to get you hooked. Yeah. I don't know if this has happened to you, Matilda, mm -hmm. but I've made some changes to, my, to the way I use my phone, for example. I noticed that after a long day, now we use our phone for work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so usually, well, the normal thing would be at the end of the day, you, are, you, you got home, had your dinner, had your shower, you were in bed. You just want to be away from your phone, right? It's like, but no, even when you are in bed, oh, let's see what's mm -hmm. on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see uh, who posted yeah. whatever photographs from the wedding of whoever or whoever, whoever. So there's always something there. And I noticed that I was like always curious. Oh, let me see. Oh, how about the comments to the article I posted? Oh, how about this? And I said, no, mm -hmm. no more. My phone doesn't stay near my bedside table anymore. After a certain time, I am at home. I am with my husband. I am talking to him about mm -hmm. his day, my day. Yeah. No mobile phone strictly oh but i have this very nice thing that you you know i i am able to charge my phone next to my bed no i've put it far away on my desk on the other side of the room just so that i don't have to be like oh let me check oh there's a notification because one, happened exactly you, yeah it? because you know one thing that's never going to stop is notifications things to see etc mm -hmm. and i remember once there was a time you know when TikTok first came about and everyone was talking about this app. And I said, oh, all the young people are on it. Let me just have a look. And I went on TikTok one day. It's like I was scrolling, scrolling. After that, I said, never again. Because it's like in my mind, oh, let me see. So that it's I can, addictive. It's addictive. If you're not careful, you can spend your whole day mm -hmm. just scrolling, scrolling. Can you see how smart they mm -hmm. are? People who create these platforms are very, very intelligent. Oh, of course. Because think with me, they don't have to pay mm -hmm. entertainers. Mm -hmm. You become the person who posts personal videos of yeah. your own life, of your marriage, of your children. Before, if I was like a producer, mm -hmm. yeah. again, I'm not very familiar with these technical terms, but if I want to make a movie or if I want to create a platform to entertain people, I would have to pay actors, I would have to pay for people to come over and do their act. Nowadays, it's for free. Mm -hmm. Guess why? Because somehow they got you to believe that, hey, post something about you. Yeah. Be sociable. Mm -hmm. Now people know where you live, what you have, what you don't have. What you ate for breakfast, what lunch, you eat, dinner. Yeah. No, there's mm -hmm. people who put their camera, their live, live stream mm -hmm. there while they eat. Yeah. How sad is that? So we're not here uh, to criticize. No. Okay, let me just say that. But I think you need to 
think for yourself. What are you doing with your time? So at our church, as usual on Sundays, we pray for the family. Yes. And I don't know if you were there uh, on that specific Sunday where, because um, my husband was ha- holding the service mm-hmm. and he asked me to go on the altar and, pray. and pray for the uh-huh. family with him. And we were talking about this, mm-hmm. you know, making the most of the time you have now. Yes. So what happens usually? You know, the person passes away and then at the funeral... You, who is going to give a speech? And then the speech is this. Oh, this person was lovely. And there's a list of qualities. There's a list of praises. But isn't it better that you say those things while the person is alive? And then you think to yourself, well, what does that have to do with any of what you're saying? Everything. Because how many hours, if you look at the screen time on your phone, which... There is an option there on settings Mm -hmm. for you to find out how long you you spend online. Those are hours that you did not spend with your loved ones. So, for instance, I'm there. I've had my shower. I'm on my jammies. I'm chit-chatting with my husband. He's checking his emails quickly. You know, we are talking about our day. I I have a choice. Do I also grab my phone? And start browsing and scrolling? Or do I choose to put that thing away and be in control and have quality time time with my husband? Or my children. I don't have any children, but maybe you do. Do you understand? So yeah, this is something you that don't get time back ever. You don't. And no. if we don't learn to control ourselves, the internet will end up controlling us. Yeah. This is it's why already controlling. It's already controlling. Yeah. And this is why, just like you, I've policed myself to not go on my phone after a certain time. Because mm-hmm. if I don't police myself, the phone will always be there. And there's always going to be things to do. Mm-hmm. In this life, there's always going to be things to do. We have to be the ones to make that decision to say, not now. And also, you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. What do I do? That's my routine Mm -hmm. as a Christian woman. What do I do? Get up in the morning. First thing I do when I open my eyes, thank you, Lord, for another day. Help me through this day. You know, you make your prayer. You go to the bathroom, get yourself changed, ready for the day. Have breakfast. And then you check your phone. But do we all do that every time? No. no. We grab our phone. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, hold on a second. And then when you realize you are late for work or you didn't have time for breakfast, you didn't have time for self-care, yeah. for self-love. So you leave your home anyhow, and then the rest of your day is a mess. It is a reflection of how you started your day. So we're just mentioning little things here. little things to make people think and understand how serious this is. Because some people might be watching this program now and think, no, this doesn't apply to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm okay. I'm online just doing what I need to do. However, if the person stops to think and looks at their screen time, like you said, they'll realize, oh my goodness. They'll be shocked. They'll be shocked. I've spent half my day almost online and sometimes doing things forgive me, but that are inconsequential, that doesn't add any value to Mm -hmm. them. They Mm -hmm. just spend their whole day. You are hypnotized by all the images. Mm -hmm. Now, other things that you miss out when you're always on your phone, on the internet, you miss out on human interaction. Yeah. You know, you are there in the bus. Um, How about noticing who is around you? You know, looking at the weather, oh, and being grateful, being present in the moment. Mm -hmm. Many people seem to like that expression these days. I think it's quite trendy. Uh, Let's put it to good use. Be present in the moment. Maybe there's someone there who's having a bad day, and then she's close to you, you know, uh, inside the bus. It's crowded. You exchange a smile. Good morning. Oh, please take a seat. But no, we are on our phones. We don't notice people around us. Mm -hmm. If someone got robbed or if someone is crying, I don't know, I didn't see it because we are constantly on our phones. And and time, Yeah, we don't get time back ever. We don't, we don't. And you know, even speaking of that, how many times Mm -hmm. we who come to the church 
we have like maybe a leaflet in our bag or something. Because we were so like engrossed in what we were doing online, we miss out on the opportunity mm -hmm. to give someone even that leaflet, to yeah. give them a, a word. And you know something interesting. Mm -hmm. I was the other day, we were having a safeguarding training mm -hmm. at our church. And I told my husband, because he's, he's one of the pastors at the church, and I told him, isn't safeguarding looking after your neighbors like in the biblical times? They didn't have safeguarding procedures back then because mm -hmm. people were naturally, um, would They're naturally notice, another, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, oh, I have some uh, spare figs. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got some spare potatoes. Right. How about we exchange Change. some? Oh, listen, uh, I've got so many apples in my garden. Oh, your kids are playing with my kids in the backyard, mm -hmm. you know. Nowadays, look, look how things evolve so slowly, yet so subtly. Subtly. Like, yeah. We need a safeguarding policy in place everywhere mm -hmm. because, hey, we need to help one another. We need to look, watch out for each other's safety. Whereas before was a natural thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now there's a Bible verse, Matilda. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Mm -hmm. It's very true, very interesting, because when your mind is on things above, you don't have time to, you know, always go online, always scroll, because, you know, inside of you, you're happy. Mm -hmm. Inside of you, you're at peace. And a lot of people that go online, it's because they're missing something. Mm -hmm. It's because they're looking for a form of escapism. Mm -hmm. But when your mind is connected, and what do we mean in practice? When you meditate, when you have genuine conversations, when you have, you know, that decent human interaction with like-minded people, mm -hmm. you don't have time to feel empty because why? Mm -hmm. Your mind is connected to God. I, I would even say that this, this Bible verse is very connected to Christians. Very, very like for it's for everybody but mm -hmm. for us it applies a lot do you know why because we are taught through the word of god think of the things from above which means don't do what everyone is doing think mm -hmm. about what you're doing think about your purpose in life what is a, a person's purpose in life is to love one another is to you know is to nurture people around you if i am a mother a wife you know, is to, is to be a decent human being, I would even dare say that. So when you think of the things above, like this scripture mentions, it means remember, stay focused on God's commandments, which, which is all very based on love and loving one another. Mm -hmm. So when we have this very, um, uh, what's the word in English, um, vivid in our mm -hmm. mind, we may have to use a phone because we need a phone. Everything is on our phone. Our, phone, our uh, bank card is on the phone. Yeah. Our emails are on the phone. But there has to be a time where, hold on a second, focus mm -hmm. on your main priorities. Call someone you haven't seen in a, in a long time. Yeah. Go for Call a cup someone, of tea. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have a human Real interaction. interaction. You know. mm -hmm. Now, Matilda, do we have any streets inter street interviews? Um, yes, we do. do so we? we went on the streets to find out what people have to say about this topic. Let's have a look. Why do people prefer the virtual world over the real world nowadays? I'm not sure that's entirely true. I think there's probably a real mix, but I think for the people who do prefer the virtual world, I think just there's just so many issues with the modern world. It's hard. Cost of living is is real. I think lots of young people struggle to, I guess, like meet the expectations that they thought they'd get looking at parents. And I guess there's always like a a desire to do better than your parents and your parents expect you to do better than them but I think it's so much harder now so like getting on the property ladder um, since the pandemic as well mental health issues have been a lot uh, more prominent as well so I think for lots of people virtual uh, virtual reality is just a nice escape from uh, the problems of everyday life because it's you get to fake it less you you get to make up your reality it's not something that's forced on you and you get to yeah, because I think it's easy for them to face reality. So the virtual world has a side that is not really true. So rather than facing reality, people prefer to hide themselves 
behind this. And then so majority of the times they are not going to be facing certain things that are true or can be hurtful. Because the virtual world you can just, you know, make over and then but the reality is another thing. So that's why I think it happens that way. I don't, but I guess people do it because they feel disconnected and they feel like if they're online 90% of the time, they feel like they're part of something or part of a community. I think it's just a matter of people searching for a bigger purpose. Do you think when we live in reality, we're able to solve the problems better than when we want to take on the virtual world? Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, they we, we live in like a very softened generation where it's very sensitive. So um, it's easier to avoid a hard topic than it is to actually deal with the problem at hand so um yeah i feel like a lot of people escape that so that they don't have to deal with it because hard things are working out they, they'll prefer to sit on the couch it's just it's in everything so yeah i feel like it's easier to get away with rea the virtual reality of things yeah so do you think people um try to run away from their truth through the virtual reality Pretty much so. And you can see that like on dating apps and stuff like this, that pu people put themselves out there to offer something. But then when the reality comes, they put themselves back because the reality implies compromise and things like this that people don't want to face. You know, the more our world became virtual, the more people are going to hide their own personality and their own will, you see. That's what I think. Yeah, no, fully. I feel like in London, everyone's walking so fast and <laughs> people are so busy in their phones. Just take a minute to look up and be happy about how nice the weather is or how pretty the green trees are i think it's important to take a minute for yourself well so uh, those were some of the opinions of people we heard this lady say that it's a way of people escaping reality cost of living and all these mm -hmm. things yes it's true but back in my actually not in my grandparents day back in my day hello mm -hmm. the internet came about when i was a teenager, maybe? Oh, yeah. So we have long. lived without internet and mobile phones. I don't think you did. No, my first phone was a Nokia 3310. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. Whatever that I'm means. not even familiar with those terms. But people from the 80s, mm -hmm. you know, we still, oh, no internet. Oh, we enjoyed so many things like... Mm -hmm. Even even though we were uh, we didn't have internet and we wanted we, we were going through problems in life and we wanted to escape reality mm -hmm. like this lady said yeah. what would we do oh I'm going out with my friends you know I'll stay outside until late chatting with mm -hmm. my neighbor you go having to grandma a, a Coca Cola <laughs> and and some cake yeah so that that was the way we escaped and and we talked about life and and whatever is on the news, and, and mm -hmm. that's it. Exactly. So, but we know that many people don't, you know, they are not from that time, so they don't know any, any other ways yeah. to escape. But Matilda, there are also some comments I want to read before uh, we go into some signs. Mm -hmm. Signs that you have a little problem with um, internet mm -hmm. slash addiction yes. in some cases, okay? Mm -hmm. Bear with us. Don't dismiss these points yet because maybe you can help your children. Maybe you don't have a problem with the internet, but maybe you notice that your children are a bit too quiet. Yeah. But then isn't that a good thing that they are quiet? No. no. Children need to be children. If they're not running around breaking stuff like... You know, when I say breaking stuff, Matilda, I mean, yeah. oh, mom, I dropped a glass. Yeah, or... being children. <laughs> then what are they doing? Mm -hmm. What are they drinking from, if you know what I mean? Okay, so let's go to the first comment, please. So someone said, because we asked people, you know, why, do, why are people preferring the virtual world? And she said, I think this is because in the virtual world, a person can mask themselves. They can make up a persona and character and act without the fear of being judged and without the fear of consequences. Mm -hmm. And many times they get worse at deceiving others, but above all, they deceive themselves. In the real world, a person cannot hide from who they are and they are faced with themselves, which many fear because of our society standards on how a person should be, behave and live. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other? Yes, so there's one more. It says, I think the virtual world allows people to escape from their reality. Those who consider life boring 
can do whatever they feel like doing online to fulfill their wants, which wouldn't be realistic in real life. It may seem like something innocent, which isn't harming anyone, but deep down, it deeply affects the person's real life. Mm. It harms them and those around them. Now, I have one here. Uh, I'll read just one today. It says, I believe that many use the excuse of being behind a screen to be who they really want to be without fear of judgment and acceptance because they aren't true to themselves in real life and know that in reality there are lifelong consequences to some of our decisions. This is another side of the internet where it's, for example, like this. You are in a conference or a seminar, you hear a seminar about a specific topic and then the speaker says, does anyone here have a question or wants to add to the topic? Nobody says anything. Mm -hmm. But if it's online, oh, yeah. they will criticize what you're wearing, the shape of your nose, uh, the shoes you're wearing, mm -hmm. uh, the How way you, you spoke. They will comment on everything apart from the actual topic. Look, look how it brings about the negativity in people sometimes. So this is another problem, mm -hmm. another problem of the internet, plus so many others that we could be mentioning here, like people who start trends yeah. on specific on things, platforms, yeah. mm -hmm. which I'm not going to mention here. And many people kill themselves, many yeah. people start comparing themselves with other people. Mm -hmm. And Matilda, I know that our viewers have heard this before. Yeah. But we are here today to challenge you to do something. Look at yourself. Look at your life. You are now watching us. Right now, you are there sitting and watching this totally non-professional presenters here mm -hmm. talking about a topic because we are not professional. Mm -hmm. We are passionate about helping people. Yes. And we, we bring topics every week. Now, sit down and pay attention. Ask yourself, do I have this problem? Am I missing out on building relationships at home with my own husband? Am I not addicted to my phone slash whatever it is that you watch on your phone. How is this impacting mm -hmm. in my life? What, what is this doing to me, to my mental health? So we're not here judging people. We are here appealing to your, um, the power that you have and I have to think to analyze what's happening around us. God gave, gave yeah. us intelligence. He did, he did. You know, power to decide. And we pray that through this program, you make a decision today to use the internet in your favor when it comes to searching for a recipe, searching for something you want to learn, a language. Even watching this program. Oh yeah, they mm. obviously. <laughs> Instead of watching pornography, yeah. hey, watch us, yes. learn something, build something. So analyze yourself and make a decision from now on. Because we are what we eat, literally. Not just with food, but with information. So my mental health, mm -hmm. huh, Matilda, yeah. is affected greatly because of the things I expose my ears to, my eyes to. So hopefully, after today's program, you will make some choices for your life. Yeah. Now, Matilda, we are going to go into some... Signs that a person is addicted to the internet. Yeah, let's go to the first one, please. So the first one is dependency. And sometimes people become very dependent on the virtual world mm -hmm. for social interactions and social skills. So. They are very, they don't know how to interact with people because the only way they interact is online is through that gaming partner, mm -hmm. that person, that man, that woman that they've been chatting to. Mm -hmm. Because on the internet, they have a whole new persona. Yeah. But when it comes to talking to someone, they become very fidgety. Listen, uh, about this new persona thing, I need to share something with you. Listen, this is, what I'm going to tell you now is real, okay? I was, uh, you know, our church is worldwide. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was in Asia. My husband was uh, allocated there. 
in the church there. So we were in Asia for a, a period of time. Doing the same work we do here, sharing the word mm -hmm. of God, healing people in Jesus' name, advising people, doing the work we do. I was one day cleaning the church on a Saturday, preparing for the Sunday service. So we were going to give out some roses to the people. Uh, there was a specific um, event, event mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday. So I was by myself and I love to use YouTube for languages. So I've got my phone there and I'm watching this uh, blogger who I thought was very professional. She was teaching English. So I was like doing cleaning and listening to the English uh, lesson. But that, that day, her video was different from all the other videos. Mm -hmm. um, she put this video up asking for help. And I was there preparing the things for sun and I was like what what why is she asking for help so I stopped what I was mm -hmm. doing and I and I really took the phone I was like so the woman broke down in tears saying that she was going through all sorts and that people were bullying her bullying her online and and uh, trying to sabotage her channel and I was like is this the same person I always watch so confident so so what did I do? I called a friend. Mm -hmm. She's actually a presenter here, Chris Budrum. And I said, Chris, there's this blogger. She's from the UK. Please get in touch. Invite her to come to mm -hmm. church to receive a prayer because she's in, in great distress. Mm -hmm. She sounds even uh, suicidal. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? She accepted and came to church. Received a prayer. Well, well, why am I saying this to you? That not everything you see is real. Mm -hmm. So, this first one here, dependency. Sometimes you depend on a blogger to cheer you up, to help you with your mood, with whatever. Like, for example, you're going through marriage problems. And then, oh, let me watch counselor so-and-so. And the counselor is there um, giving, giving you advice. all sorts of mm -hmm. advice. But when you look, they are not even married. So how does that work? How can I advise you if I'm not married myself? No, it's a bit strange. So you depend on people that can't help you. Exactly. And this is why many people are suffering because imagine you're passing to me something that you don't have. Yeah. So how is it going to impact my life? It's going to impact my life, my life for the worse. Yeah, because if that counselor posts a video the next day, broke, completely broken down, it's like, oh my God, if he's broken, what is going to happen gonna, to my... Exactly. So we can't depend, but many people do. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, second... Um, sign. Sign. Anxiety. Some people become anxious and nervous when they are not online. It's like you have withdrawal... Withdrawal symptoms. Symptoms. Is that how you say, right, mm -hmm. when you have an addiction? It's the same. Now, third one. The third one says addiction, but in the that's sense a given, that... Right? Yeah, that's a given, exactly. Because people spend more time online to get away from, in their mind, the pressures of life. Pressures of life. So they go there, they, they talk to, like you were saying, counsellors, mm -hmm. bloggers, mm -hmm. you know, friends. But instead of, you know, this helping them, it just shows that they can't stay away from this. Because if I'm going through a problem... I'm going to seek for the right person to help me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to seek for, you know, advice from maybe the 24-hour helpline or someone who I know can really add to my life. But many people are but not aware are of the helplines. Yes. Thank you for reminding me of this. Mm -hmm. So at our church, like we always tell you here on, on every episode, we have a 24-hour helpline, a spiritual help. There are many helps out there that will tell you how to cope with certain feelings you have. But at our church, through the word of God, we teach you to go to the root of the problem. So get in touch with us. The details are on our screen right now, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, next one, physical neglect. Yes. When people spend their whole time online, sometimes they don't, they forget to shower. Yeah. They forget to brush their teeth. They, they wake have up long in, nails. Long nails, hair everywhere. You know, they wake up in the morning straight online. 
before mm. they go to bed or not. Sometimes they don't even go to bed because yeah. they are always online. And they they're... have these special chairs, right? That looks mm -hmm. like a... That look like... Uh, like how do you call those very... Because they really, you know, mm -hmm. the market is like this. What is selling at the moment? People like to be online all the time. Let's make very nice comfy chairs. Mm -hmm. So now people have these chairs. It's like you are in a spaceship. And the only thing you need is one of those things that connects you to the bathroom. Yeah. There's actually a name for that. I'm not sure of the name, but yeah, there is. Huh? Our produ our, a, one of our, one of our one producers. producers. What's the name? A it's a, a catheter. It's a catheter. So I know we are sounding a bit sarcastic, but is this the, the next thing? The next big thing? The next big thing. Why? So it, it may sound funny, but this is really sad. This is real. Well, we've got more. Um, let's go over the other ones quickly before yes. we end. Mm -hmm. So it says reduction in eating or overeating. Yeah. You know. How many times have we heard yeah. news that someone died exactly. online because they spent many hours in the same position, mm -hmm. uh, stressing over a game or something. Mm. Yes. Neglect of personal hygiene. So it's kind of link, linked to what we said earlier. Yeah. Not showering, not brushing your teeth, not, not doing anything. They just let themselves go, as they yeah. say. Yeah, don't leave their room. Don't leave their room. You know, it even says here, reduction in physical activity. Oh, yeah, that's a that's, uh, given as well. Because you, you're there uh, static, is yeah, that how you static. say? Yeah, you like, don't move. On the phone, mm -hmm. actually, there are new health conditions um, because of social media. There's an, a new neck problem and a new tendon illness as well as something to do with your fingers. Your fingers. I'm not sure. Of it, but yeah, yeah. We are evolving. Mm -hmm. Another one, loss, uh, lost, lost sense, sense of, of time. time. Yeah. And the last one, irritability or violence. Mm -hmm. Like, leave me alone. Give me five more minutes. I'm just finishing something. I'm just talking to someone. Well, my dear friends, if you can see yourself in some of these points, be true to yourself, you know, and, and, and make decisions. Remember, you are in control of your life. Don't let things, trends, uh, you know, social media, media, whatever platforms, dictate how you live your life, how you dress, how you behave, how you spend your time. You are in control. Right, Matilda? Exactly. Anything else before we go? No, you said it all. And if you have to hide what you're doing online, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it at all. Yeah. Because, you know, some people, they get very... No, I don't want anyone to see, oh my gosh, this is my life, my private thing. If you have to hide, mm -hmm. then maybe you have a problem and you have to just be humble to get the help. And we have help here. And just one last tip. Mm -hmm. One last tip. If I had children, if I had, I don't have, but if I had, this is what I would do. In my home, there would be one screen. Where? In the living room. Oh, we need a computer. It's in the living room. There is, there would be a desk that everyone can use, mm -hmm. right? Yes, I would still have my phone and my tablet, but there would be rules in the house. And not just say to my children, don't use this, don't. No, I would explain because they are very intelligent. If you tell them how harmful it can be in the long run, they will understand. Mm -hmm. And they will be able to make their choices later on in life. But at least you taught them the right thing. So this thing of, again, is to sell, to make money. Mm -hmm. Have a TV in every bedroom. Have a flat screen on the wall in, in each bedroom. In each, mm -hmm. I say, wh why? So that we can all be isolated? How not intelligent is that? Yet we subscribe to many of these things, things yeah. without even realizing. Okay? Matilda. That's yes. all we have time for That's today. That's all we have time for. But and uh, remember, we are not here criticizing anybody, but yeah. helping you see what maybe you haven't realized or noticed yet. Okay? You are in control of your life. Aren't we in the era of empowerment? Oh, yes. Where is the empowerment when it comes to social media and internet? You take control of your own life 
and you will see how much happier you will be. Indeed. Right? Yes. That's all for now. That's all for now. Leave your comments. Join us again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. The problems that I faced in the past was addictions. I was also suicidal. I had depression and I was not diagnosed with depression, but I was always lonely. I grew up in a broken family with a single mom. My relationship with my mom was not also good. So being a mother, I was not ready to be a mother. So my daughter suffered a lot. I just didn't have a vision. I was not happy living. I had addictions of pornography, masturbation. I always also had desire of like having like multiple relationships at once. The mother I was in the past was a mother that didn't care for my daughter I would prefer like pay babysitters to be with her I would prefer to go out and party and drink and smoke with friends the mother that I was was a mother that didn't give the love that she needed the worst moment in my past life was when I lost everything I lost my job I had to sleep on the floor and those days was the days that came to my mind just to end your life. Like, even though I tempted previously, but this time around, instead of just ending my own life, I was thinking of ending my daughter's life. And I was asking, how can I kill her without her feeling pain? I wanted to end my daughter's life because I was told by a family friend that I was selfish and if I can kill myself, who is going to take care of my daughter? And that's when I, the thought came to just end her. So we both won't be in the world to be suffering around people that I felt that didn't care for us. I try finding help in partying. I would party from Monday to Monday. Alcohol, cannabis, isolating myself in the sense of just me trying to just be high all day listening to music. When I attempted suicide, I was transferred to a psychologist. I was speaking to her, I was sharing her all my problems, but whatever she was advising me, it wasn't helping me because the pain and the, everything that was happening with me was internally. So even though I would speak to her, it would be like a momentarily kind of a good feeling. But after I left, I went back into the loneliness. I went back to the bad feelings and then when I realized that that wasn't happening, I decided to go somewhere else to find help. I also tried to find help going to witchcraft. The first thing that they said was, I need to do a bath to protect myself and to remove all the things that has been thrown to me. And of course, because I was so desperate looking for help, I decided to do as I was advised to do. So as she advised me to also do the card reading, and so put items and stuff around my house, idols and everything else just for me to, to overcome what I was feeling inside. But being there in that help, I still did not find the help and I kept trying to find help. When I came to the UK, I was looking for a church and one day there was a bus that was used for an event. This bus was used as an evangelism bus. And I remember it passed two times and I didn't see anything. There wasn't nothing that attracted me. I just saw the people very happy. I prayed and I asked God, God, I need to find help. I need help. And this time around, I am not gonna choose the church. You're going to choose the church for me. The following Saturday, I saw the bus and this time the bus stopped in front of my window. I saw the 24 hour helpline and it just caught my attention and I said, it's God. So I took a picture and from that moment I called the helpline and my first event, um, first attendance was the event. I heard a testimony that was relating everything that I was going through. And I said to myself, if their life can change, my life can change. And I said to myself, I believe that this place is the place I'm gonna get the help. After receiving the Holy Spirit, I was no longer lonely. I had an internal peace, but it wasn't a peace that would come and go. It was a peace that even in the hard times, it didn't take away my peace. I had the strength. And the amazing thing is that now, having the Holy Spirit, I gave hope to others and help others. My life today is a total transformed life. From within me, I have the peace. I have a joy. It's a joy that never goes. It's a peace that never goes. I Now I can sleep well. I no longer 
see my life just being stuck in a, in a sense of a dark cloud. My relationship with my, my daughter is amazing. We get along good. I have a lot of understanding now more than ever. Now I always give thanks to God that I didn't allow myself to take that action that I was planning to to end her life because today I can see her growing up to be a very happy young lady. I think it's very important for us to ask for help because before I was a very proud person that I didn't want to ask for help so I felt like I was everything was well with me when I knew inside of me I was suffering until I made a decision to ask for help by calling the helpline. And today I am extremely happy that I made that or had the courage to take that step and ask for help. Do you often wish that you had someone to talk to at any time of the day or night? Would you like to have someone to listen to you without any judgments? Would you like a listening ear for whenever you are afraid, doubtful, or worried? The UCKG Help Center runs a 24-hour helpline for anyone in need of advice, help, or support. This free service is available every day for those difficult situations that can arise at any point in our lives. Get in touch today and allow a friend to help you through your trying times. No matter what you may be going through, we are here to help. UCKG Helpline 020 7686 6000